Being an architect has always been known as being the jack of all trades. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk about technology and architecture. As myself personally, an entrepreneur, a Masters of Architecture graduate, and a tech enthusiast. So today we're gonna to be talking about the five programs architects need to know in order to do their job effectively. We're also gonna be looking at them as a whole, what skills you need to know inside each of these categories and how they apply to your actual job. So let's start with number one, the most generic and obvious. You need to know a good 3D modeling program. Either Archicad or Revit are my two absolute go-tos. If you don't know either one of these, make sure you start learning them ASAP. If you know one effectively and you're an architecture student still at university, take this freedom and luxury that you have to learn the other. It is very important that you know both so that when it comes time to applying for a job, whatever that firm is using, you know already that skill and you know how to use that software. The skills are pretty basic here. You need to know everything. You need to know how to document, design, you need to know how to draw details in 2D, in 3D. It goes on and on because it is a pretty large chunk of your job. Obviously, that comes back down to doing sketch design, design development, working drawings, construction drawings, everything. That's why number one is the most generic because it is the program that is expected architects know. Number two, Photoshop. Photoshop is one of Adobe's programs that I recommend today that you learn because it is a versatile tool to know. There are so many things across the spectrum of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis that require some basic understanding of Photoshop. No, you don't have to go out and be a complete artist and know how to draw a full 3D section and model it and then render it and do absolutely everything in Photoshop. But most of the skills that you do and will need to know are very transferable that one day you can probably actually do all this if you needed to. There are three basic skills that you need to master here. One, you need to understand how to add or change materials and colors in the photo. Two, you need to know how to add or remove people, objects, or any imperfections in a photo. And lastly, you need to know how to overlay and create collages and different layers in the Photoshop program itself. So all of these three skills are very basic and generic and you can learn them anywhere on YouTube. But these skills form the fundamentals of what you'll require in practice. So number one, to add or change materials. When it comes to doing marketing floor plans for clients or for the council, it becomes imperative that you understand how to add textures and materials to a very generic floor plan. Usually what's produced is a basic black and white 2D line floor plan. So most of the time you have to come into Photoshop and add layers and add furniture and do a little bit of extra finessing to make these marketing plans really stand out. Yes, you can do them in Archicad and Revit, but they never look as good. Referring back to point number two, which is add or remove people. This one's kind of obvious and generic for millennials, I guess, because we do it very often in Photoshopping for social media. So a lot of people will have that ability if it isn't even in Photoshop with a third party app or whatever it is, but it does become very important and critical. If you're on site taking photos to post on social media or to try and win some new clients and there's, I don't know, a bucket left in the bottom corner or a person that's just sitting in the background randomly standing there and you need to get rid of them to make this shot appealing and professional, it is a very simple skill that it can be learned very quickly on Photoshop. It's a lot easier than you might think but it's something that you will use all the time. And finally, creating collages and overlaying items is very basic. This is more so used to create mood boards and color palettes when you come to doing interior design and working in with interior architects. You can very easily and quickly kind of put together a color palette that can then be presented to somebody doing the 3D renders or you yourself doing the 3D renders so you can kind of visualize and understand how all these materials work together. This becomes very good and very useful for when you actually need to go to different suppliers and get physical products. So you're not wasting your time getting 100 different products. 
you can simply go and get the top three or the top five and then create the palette that you require. One great skill you can actually do in Photoshop very quickly is learning how to draw the like button. So if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor, smash that like button down below. And if you're really enjoying this video so far, hit the subscribe button to get more of my content. Program number three, Illustrator. Illustrator is another Adobe platform program that is very simple to actually learn for what you need to do in an architectural profession. Basically, all you need to know is how to draw lines and fill in some boxes. That, that's it. If you know how to draw a square and a circle, you're miles above everybody else. It isn't a hard program to learn. It's literally click, pull, drag, click, pull, drag, and there you go, you've created a circle or a box or an arrow. But what it is actually used for in practice and in principle is many, many things. So one, you'll more than likely end up designing a logo on Illustrator because it's a vector graphic program, which means you can shrink your logo to teeny tiny or you can blow it up to a billboard and it will still be pixel perfect. Whereas if you create that logo in Photoshop, well, unfortunately, if you blow it up to what it was, I don't know, 10 times its original size, it's gonna be very blurry. You're not gonna be able to read the text and it's just gonna be a complete waste. Whereas vectors, they keep their shape perfectly the whole time. But more so in practice, what you're really gonna use is overlaying diagrams. So if you create an elevation or a perspective image that needs to illustrate something on it, for example, some landscaping across the front, where the ventilation is, how the sun goes, where people might see some vistas or how that mass has been manipulated to create the final product. This is something that you'll use Illustrator to actually overlay that information. It's a very simple process. It takes a little bit of time, not time to learn, but more so time to actually do these drawings. But once they're completed, they are very effective communicating tools. You'll then also go ahead and use Illustrator to create little diagrams to explain different things. So for example, you might be explaining the relationship between the massing of this property in relation to the next one. There are so many icons and diagrams that you can create that kind of flows into the territory of a graphic designer. But because we need to communicate our ideas, they can't all be in our head 24 seven. It becomes critical that we learn very quickly how to diagram and demonstrate all of these ideas. It becomes even more critical when you start talking to people who aren't inside the profession or who are more used to just reading plans and don't understand the architecture as a whole. For example, some councils will require and request that you put together a full documentation package very similar to what you do at university to explain the building, the function, the form, and how it will sit in relation to its environment. So this allows people who are coming straight off the street, especially if it's a very sensitive project where the community is involved, to understand your vision and hopefully convince them and actually get this project built. Talking about convincing people, number four, rendering software. If you're using ArchiCAD or Revit, my first recommendation is either Enscape or Twinmotion. Both of them produce phenomenal results in a very short amount of time once your model is complete. But the skills you're gonna to have to master in 3D rendering is both photo and video. There is no longer a world where photo rendering is everything. You really need to understand that we're more of a visual society now, especially with the more social media that we consume, the more YouTube we watch, that we become more and more accustomed to seeing things move animate and actually express emotion. So if you can convey that in a video, that's fantastic. In practice, obviously you can use this to showcase to your clients. Clients love seeing 3D renders and 3D videos, especially of their project, especially if it's a mum and dad client. It means their dream home that they've been dreaming about, thinking about and saving for their entire life is finally coming true and they can visualize it for the first time ever. Most people aren't gonna be able to visualize spaces off floor plans. So it's very, very important that you remember to showcase something in 3D, no matter what your skills and ability is, it just gets the picture and the point across. So like I mentioned in my last video, councils also require a lot of detail and understanding of projects, especially if they have to communicate it to the community. For something that's a very sensitive project, it's important to get feedback and information from the community and the council during the review and the DA process that, that you can actually learn what they want 
in order to make sure this project is viable and constructible. It's no good building and designing the absolute best thing ever in the world if it's gonna get rejected by bureaucracy. And finally, videos are just good to use as a marketing tool, either be it selling yourself or selling the actual property before it's built. You'd be surprised how many people will watch a video go, wow, that is amazing and absolutely where I want to live for the rest of my life or work for the rest of my life. And here's my deposit, let's get going. And finally, the fifth program you have to learn is Excel. In Excel, there is an abundance of things you can know and do, and it's more so a financial program than anything else, but it's good to know the very basic formulas in Excel and understand the principles of how it works. Depending on where you work and what kind of practice you work at, many companies are still using Excel for their timesheets and various other documentation. A lot of builders end up using it for their Gantt charts, processing how they will actually plan out the building and stage out the building. And then you're gonna have to understand how to use it for variations and time delays and documentation. So it becomes a very good filing and documenting tool and basically a lifesaver when you have to do a lot of math. It's definitely an out of the box program that I recommend learning but it is something that you will have to know or eventually just get accustomed to. Because let me give you an example in practice. If you're on site, a builder has issued you a variation and you haven't tracked it properly, it's gone unnoticed, they can easily assume that the variation has been accepted and continue building that section of the building. Now, if you've missed that variation, if you haven't tracked it properly, if the information hasn't been conveyed properly, if it hasn't been filed and documented properly, this could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's critical that every bit of information during construction is documented and filed properly. And Excel is just one of the tools that you're gonna be using for that whole period of construction. There's only one real shortfall with Excel though, and that's the fact you can't really draw a realistic like button. You're gonna to have to just hit that one down there, make it turn blue and help this video with the algorithm so more people get this advice and learn the top five programs architects need to know. Anyway, that's all from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button just below, make it turn blue and help this video with the algorithm. The more likes it gets, the more it gets spread to the YouTube community and the more people that will see it. So I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. If you enjoyed it, make sure you also smash that subscribe button to get more of my content. Usually it's every Monday that I upload, but this week I'm trying to push out three videos in one week. Anyway, wish me luck and I'll see you next time.